As you know, uh, governors, uh, particularly in more recent years, have collected, collated, and preserved documents, letters, information, schedules, all sorts of stuff, because uh, in today's world, the history of what's gone on in administration uh, is of some value for uh, the public at large. And the media does a good job of ensuring that that information gets disseminated, but it has to be organized in a fashion, has to be housed in a fashion, and it has to be placed somewhere so that archivists, historians, students, and the public at large can have access to it and can review and learn or sometimes merely for uh, just entertainment see uh, some of the specifics of what's going on throughout the life or the course of an administration. Uh, I didn't even realize that my staff in the governor's office started archiving stuff or at least saving for archiving purposes uh, material from the very first day in office. Uh, it subsequently made uh, known to me but uh, I was interested in doing a whole lot of other stuff and otherwise engaged at the time but people were smart enough to have done that from the outset and uh, for that I'm very thankful. Uh, as you know uh, lots of institutions and both uh, institutions of higher education as well as libraries such as the Butler Center down in Little Rock uh, seek to house gubernatorial papers and uh, seek to, to be the repository of those archives. And there was some significant pressure for me to do that with most of the other governors at the Butler Center in Little Rock. But I'm the only uh, ASU graduate, I think, that's ever been governor. And uh, if it wasn't for this place, I never would have been governor. If it wasn't for this institution, uh, I never would have had the opportunities in life that uh, life has afforded me. And so I thought it was appropriate uh, that all that stuff should come here. And so we're announcing today that the archives, the papers, all the paraphernalia uh, will be housed on the ASU campus. And this is where we're going to have it. In addition to that, uh, we're going to recreate the governor's office. Uh, if we come up with, uh, it's pretty cheap furniture in there now. Uh, so if we come up with a couple thousand dollars to buy it, we're going to move everything that's in the governor's office, uh, except for about four historic paintings that uh, we can't move because we couldn't afford those. Uh, we're going to recreate it here. Uh, and there's a room in the Kay's house that coincidentally is perfectly laid out, just like the governor's office, only a mirror image reverse. Uh, what's on the right-hand side of the governor's office is on the left-hand side uh, in this large room here and vice versa. And so they're going to recreate, uh, as part of that history, uh, the governor's office right here in this building for students and for tourists or people or anybody that, uh, that wants to see it. But that's really not what's academically important. I mean, that's nice. But what's academically important is that we want to do an economic development and education institute at ASU. And we are going, we're in the process of, and we intend to raise a ton of money uh, to be able to uh, ensure that an institute for education and economic development is housed here with appropriate studies and degrees, hopefully, uh, in those disciplines or in that discipline. And one of the reasons I think for that is that throughout the course of my political career, I have come to believe, and the entire time I was governor, I tried to emphasize to all our people that the number one priority of state government is educating our people. But a close 1A to that is to provide them good jobs, because it doesn't do you any good to educate your people and they end up going to LA or New York or Minneapolis or Chicago for a good job. So a close 1A, if you will, to the number one uh, responsibility being education is economic development. And I've said more times than most people care to hear that they are two sides of the same coin. And you can't develop economically without a trained or educated or skilled workforce. And you can't really take advantage of those, ed those increased educational uh, opportunities if you don't have that economic development and those good jobs right here in our own state for people to stay here. 
So I think you marry those two concepts. Uh, I think there ought to be one word. I hadn't come up with it yet. There have been a lot of suggestions. But you marry the concepts of education and economic development in a way that if you get that right, other issues that you face as a people are easier to solve. Health care, criminal justice, uh, civil justice. Uh, you name whatever other field you want to name, and if you get education and economic development right, those other problems are easier to solve. That doesn't mean they're automatically solved, but you give me an educated, trained, and, and uh, properly paid workforce, and I'll take my chances with all those other issues. That's what really is uh, what we want to announce today. That's what this really is all about. And hopefully in years to come, young people matriculating in this school professors teaching in this school, historians that utilize the resources of my university here will be able to utilize these assets and others that may come and follow to learn and to teach and to marry those concepts of education and economic development for the betterment and future of our people. So thank you for being here today. That's really what this is all about. Thank you.